Hi, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. We're looking at a Canon A1 because it was the first manual focus SLR that I owned, and these photography notes are relating to focusing. In the first section I explain the importance of understanding what phase detection autofocus is and why cross-type points are so important, and in the second bit I'll cover what the term reflex in SLR really means, despite popular opinion. So let's start by looking at what I would have seen through this Canon's viewfinder. The central circle of this focusing screen is divided into an upper half and a lower half, with the actual image split by a prism. When an object is out of focus, it's shifted to the side, but in opposite directions in the top and bottom halves. As you focus the lens, the two halves come together again, and when they line up, you know that the object is exactly in focus. For obvious reasons, this was called a split-screen focuser. A horizontal split was great for focusing on vertical lines. It's very easy to tell when the lines don't match up, or, in other words, are out of phase with each other. When it comes to horizontal lines, though, like the horizon, it wasn't so helpful. Shifting from side to side doesn't really give you anything to line up, even if you do get the line exactly on the divide between the upper and lower halves, which itself is not very easy. What you'd end up doing, of course, was turning the camera and holding it vertically while you focus, which makes things a lot easier. So what does this have to do with autofocus cameras? Well, as you may have guessed from the terminology, a phase detection autofocus sensor works, at least in theory, very much like the split-screen focuser does. Let's consider a single focusing point on this Canon 5D Mark II focusing screen. At an outer point like this, the camera would have a horizontal phase detect sensor, which, as you'll recall, is good for focusing on vertical lines. It works like this. A micro lens or a prism will split that line, but instead of doing it in an upper and lower half, it's at the same horizontal level. When the object is out of focus, it's split further apart, and as the lens reaches focus, the split line shifts back into phase, that is, it's lined up. Generally, the split image passes through colored filters, so the autofocus system can tell whether the image is front-focused or back-focused, depending on whether the red image, say, is shifted to the right or to the left of center. Single AF sensors tend to be horizontal, but they can also be vertical, which makes them more reliable for focusing on horizontal lines like these. Now in the older 5D Mark II, most of the autofocus points only had a single direction autofocus sensor. The center point, though, had a vertical and a horizontal sensor, which is called a cross-type point, so that it's able to focus on twice as many orientations as the other points. Understanding this is critical when you're evaluating a camera's autofocus system. The issue came up frequently when people were comparing the Nikon D7000, which had 39 autofocus points, but only the center 9 were cross-type, and the Canon 7D, in which all 19 were cross-type points. Plus, the center was a dual diagonal cross. And the same thing is still an important factor today in comparing, for example, the Nikon D800 with the 5D Mark III, and of course other modern cameras, like the Sony Alpha 99. And this brings us to the second topic of the video, the term reflex, as in single lens reflex, or SLR. Sony calls their pellicle mirror cameras SLTs, that is, single lens translucent, which is a handy marketing designation. It separates their pellicle mirrors from their standard mirror cameras, though they didn't pull off the marketing quite as memorably as the similarly named South Lake Union trolley here in Seattle. But there's still a lot of disagreement over whether these SLTs are also SLRs. And in large part, it's because of a misunderstanding of what reflex means. A quick look around the internet gives us lots of examples. People seem to think that the term refers to the fact that the mirror flips up. This explanation evokes some nice imagery. That's unfortunately completely wrong. 
Now, I expect that sort of thing from hobbyists posting on forums and product reviews. People say all kinds of nonsense on the internet, after all. However, someone like Michael Reichman of The Luminous Landscape really should know better, so I felt I had to address this. In a review last October of the Sony Alpha 99, Michael Reichman said, I'd like to call it a DSLR, but some nitpickers don't like that because there's no prism and moving mirror. To put it plainly, the term reflex in SLR has nothing to do with mirror movement. And you can see that when Canon released their pellicle mirror cameras in the 1960s, they had no problem calling them SLRs, or later when they produced them in the 1980s and 90s. More importantly, the twin lens reflex cameras like Raleigh Flex never had moving mirrors. They had a fixed mirror that reflected the image from the second lens directly to a ground glass focusing screen. It's that reflection that is the origin of the term reflex. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, in fact, the relevant definition of the term reflex simply means reflected or bent backwards, dating from the 16th century. So for reflex to be appropriate in a camera, it's not necessary for it to have a pentaprism, as Reichman suggested, or a moving mirror, because the twin reflex cameras had neither of those things. And it isn't even necessary to have a ground glass focusing screen. The term reflex was used for camera obscura designs dating back to the 17th century, in which no focusing screens were involved. Or glass lenses, for that matter. They were pinhole cameras. No, the requisite detail is that a mirror reflects the image out of its normal path before it reaches the viewing screen, whatever that viewing screen is made of. So are the Sony SLTs also SLRs? If the source of the image in the camera's electronic viewfinder, or EVF, were a reflection in the pellicle mirror, then yes, it would be an SLR. However, if there's no reflection involved in the visual path to the EVF, then it's not an SLR, as there's no reflex. Sony's published information suggests that the reflection from the pellicle mirror only feeds an autofocus module, not the viewfinder. However, when I called Sony for confirmation, the tech claimed that the EVF image comes from the mirror reflection, unless the camera is in live view mode. I was skeptical, and four of my emails to Sony asking for clarification went unanswered. Since the camera's image stabilization system is on the main image sensor, and the EVF is stabilized, for now I'll stick with the implications of the text and patent diagrams, and conclude that the SLT designation is not just a marketing term, but also the technically correct substitute for SLR. And for this edition of Photography Notes on Light and Matter, I'll leave it at that.